Is Mexico all drug cartels and fancy beach resorts? We don't think so. Come with us as we travel by RV with 12 other couples on an epic three-month adventure to explore the culture, history, and food of our neighbor to the south. Hola, I'm Rhonda. And I'm Angie, and we're not used to getting in hammocks. <laughs> and we're Adventures in Nomadness. Hey, we made it to Palenque in the state of Chiapas, and we're hoping this hammock doesn't break. <laughs> Palenque is, uh, like I said, the state of Chiapas, one of the poorest states, probably the poorest state in all of Mexico, but really rich in culture and amazing things to see, including howler monkeys that kept us awake at six in the morning. Right. We are off to Palenque today, but we want to give you kind of an overview of what it's like on a driving day in a caravan. Um, the day starts the day before with a meeting, which we had. We go over what time we're leaving in the morning, uh, how far the drive is, what our stops are going to be, and kind of what the plan of attack is for the next few days. So uh, it's busy and uh, we're leaving very early in the morning, 7 a.m., because we've got a long drive day ahead of us. So people are getting all ready, getting their rigs all together, and away we go. Typical. Three. Two is ready. Three is ready. Typical morning. We're getting ready to roll, and the first is thing ready. is that our leader starts to count ready. off, and we go through the full Seven list, and if everybody says they're ready, we pull okay, out. <laughs> All right, stop number one today. Stopped at the Skull Station. Uh, there's a few people that need gas, but this is pretty typical of our bathroom breaks or our body breaks. Took the dogs out, did our own little break, and uh, we're gonna try and get on the road faster than normal. We usually take about 20 minutes after the last person gets gas. Uh, we're trying to take like 10 minutes so uh, because we have such a long day. And then uh, we'll have a few other stops today along the way, but just wanted to show you what our typical stop is like at a beautiful gas station. Uh, we had to catch up, so there was an agricultural inspection where they asked if you have fruits and vegetables, but they're all just sitting around, not interested in us at all. Uh, Alan Dwight had uh, stopped for the rest of us to catch up. But then I got past my game. Make sure you go in with her. Yep, I want to walk with me. So that type of checkpoint is not uh, the normality for each state crossing into. Uh, we did just cross into Chiapas and uh, some states are a little bit more rigid. So basically they checked our, our passports, our tourist cards and our vehicle paperwork. And then uh, they checked our vehicle VIN against that paperwork. And then they had us open up the RV so they could actually walk inside. I think pay basically just to make sure there's nobody on board. And uh, I think about half of us are through the checkpoint and we're just waiting right now. But yeah, it was not a big deal. All right, it was a little chaotic at our lunch stop. Uh, we only had about a half an hour. Wanted to get gas there. 
Uh, wanted to make a sandwich, wanted to go to the OXO station that was right there, also OXO store, so we could re refill up our SIM card. So it was a little too much going on for me to film and I was able to buy some milk also at that OXO. So that's kind of a typical lunch stop is just at a Pemex or some sort of gas station that has a, a store. This one also had a restaurant. So if you folks did that, we, uh, we we're hoping to, as a group, kind of get through there fast. Uh, so we, a lot of us made sandwiches, but a few people did uh, get something from the restaurant there too, which is always kind of nice to do, support the local economy. Anyway, it was a, a fast break uh, since we're trying to get on the road and, and get through this day a little faster. Anyway, we should be there soon. Those are the howler monkeys and they sound super scary and prehistoric and they sometimes do that in the middle of the night. Yeah. <laughs> so I uh, can't really capture them with this camera but I got some killer pictures of them with my really good telephoto lens. But uh, oh, it's a nice chill day where we're at in Palenque and getting ready to have a wonderful meal with our friends Isabel and Bill. Hello. <laughs> Isabelle's over there watching monkeys and cooking chicken at the same time. Yeah, multi talent. Right. Hey, good morning. We we're woken up bright and early by the howler monkeys. At like 6, 6.30 in the morning, like, ah, doing their thing. So I'm off to Palenque um, Ruins, and then we're going to a cool waterfalls afterwards, and Rhonda has elected to stay here. We're about midway through the trip, and her introvertness is, sorry, I'm squinting, the sun's really bright. Her introvertness is uh, kind of taking hold, and so she's going to stay back and have some time to herself. So it looks like our, our vans over there are here, and we're on our way. This is 24 structures, but we have 1,453 in Palenque. Okay, so most of the city still hidden under the trees, under the jungle.
All right, well, I'm at the Palenque ruins. It's not as grand as far as the size of the structures and, and temples as some others we've been to, but it's super interesting. It's very different from the others. Uh, there's about 1,400 document, documented buildings here, but only 10% have been covered. So it's massive. Uh, it was believed to be occupied from about 226 BC all the way to about 800 AD. And uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is in the state of Chiapas and not sure yet how much it cost us to get in so we didn't have to pay for it, but I will follow up on that. But uh, what an extremely unique site compared to all the others we've been to. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're at Cascadia, Cascadas de Agua Azul, and I hope this is worth it. So we spent an hour on those buses behind us on really twisty windy roads, I feel a little green around the gills. A little bit longer drive, a lot longer drive than I was expecting. I didn't really know what to expect. Uh, so anyway, um, we've got a couple of lunch spots here, but I'm gonna hold off on that for a little bit. And then I'm gonna go check out the falls. It's supposed to be amazing. And it better be after that drive. Bleh. Yeah, we're having a big old barbecue with pinata tonight and uh, ordered fish, it's a whole fish. <laughs> Us and our caravan friends are going to the town of Palenque, took a taxi, and we're gonna check out this artisan market and then go in to downtown. Hola! Gringos on bicicletas! <laughs> Thank you. 
Tuesday. <laughs> it's 222 on 222 2022. Two. <laughs> there we go. And we're in Palenque, Chiapas, Mexico. Woohoo! <laughs> you look like you're sweating. Sirloin tacos with a milder sauce. Not at all mild. <laughs> what are you eating down there? Cortez. This is a, a ham and cheese, and this one was mushroom and cheese. It's huge. They're delicious. And your tacos like us. Um, yeah, a gringa taco. A gringa taco. A gringa with pork and cheese and a little bit of pineapple, Ooh. which is delicious. Hey, good morning. Before we leave today, I wanted to give you a review of where we stayed for the last uh, four nights, and that was at the Nututen Hotel. Uh, so this turned out to be a great stop. There's absolutely no power that we could use. Uh, there was a water fill and one dump. So there was all that. It is literally a parking lot. Now in the past, they had people parking down there in a big field, but even a little bit of rain makes it just too too nasty. Uh, so it's not big rig friendly at all. So I think they just use that for tent camping now. So uh, 13 rigs were definitely all sort of crammed in here. Uh, it's, I think normally about 130 to 150 pesos per person per night, uh, which is really inexpensive. Uh, that gives you access to all the hotel amenities. That includes the pool, and then uh, down that way, right behind me, is the, the river access. So you have a nice pool uh, of uh, sort of a pool in the river that you can swim in uh, with hammocks and then uh, kind of access down there, which is really nice. Uh, the pool is really nice, and they do have some bathrooms scattered around here. The showers are cold, so they do have a shower house kind of down, uh, down in the, the tent camping area. Uh, the rooms here are super cheap, and because of the heat and the lack of electricity, a uh, few people actually elected to just pay for a hotel room for the four nights. It was like 50 bucks each night. It was uh, well worth it. We didn't do that. However, one of our good friends here decided to uh, do a night um, and then gifted that to Bernie and his girlfriend, who's here visiting this week. And uh, before they gifted it to them, they let us all take showers. <laughs> so just like awesome, super, super nice of them. Uh, this, uh, this place is absolutely amazing. And one of the reasons, despite the lack of electricity uh, and not being able to use AC in the heat, but it's absolutely gorgeous here. There's just, it, you feel like you're in the jungle and you are because this is right near downtown Palenque. So it's easy access to getting into town. It's very easy access to get to the ruins. Uh, it's a longer drive to get to the waterfalls. And I don't think I ever answered that question of, was the waterfalls worth it? <laughs> huh. They actually were, I think. So a um, little bit lack of information to people when we first got there by our guide. Uh, it's a long, long drive out to the falls, out to Cascades uh, de Agua Azul. It's about an hour and a half each way on really, really narrow, twisty roads with lots of topes, so very slow going. Uh, once we got there, we only had two hours, and a lot of people didn't realize that the, the walkway and the falls went way back up with better swimming areas. And so by the time you had lunch, um, and then, you know, even if, like me, I walked away up there, didn't have time to actually get in the pools. So an extra hour would have been absolutely perfect and would have been worth it. Uh, the other thing is we had done the ruins earlier in the day, felt rushed there, and then we went to this other waterfalls, uh, Mizel Ha, and that was amazing. They could have easily spent a lot more time there. So if you do have a chance to get to uh, Palenque, it's well worth a visit. It takes some effort to get here for sure. There are tours out of Via Hermosa uh, to get here to Palenque and buses, and you can fly and rent a car, which I've seen actually quite a few people do. Uh, there's also been uh, a few tour buses here that I think do kind of a big route uh, with ruins and everything. All right, well, we are off to our next adventure. We're going to Via Hermosa again. It's kind of a, a good stopping point on to, you know, going back up towards uh, Northern Mexico. So we're leaving the Yucatan Peninsula and heading back north again. One night in Via Hermosa to the Omec Heads. And we'll talk more about that in our next video. All right, see you down the road.